Hey guys, my name is Jeremiah Williams, um, and today I want to talk about two comic books that came out months ago, one in December, or was it the beginning of January, one on my birthday, which is May 10th, but it's very cool that these comic books came out, the stories are great, but what what comic books am I talking about? These two. Clown Man issue one and Kill Switch issue one. Now off the bat, I love the cover of Clown Man. I mean you got the smiley face right here, you got Clown Man holding his card. Um oops. You got Lamorty right there. I mean, you just, it's throwing. It's throwing with all kinds of color. All kinds of color. It's just, the color just makes it pop out. And even with white and black, the logo just pops out itself with all the color. It's, it's great. And, um, you know, the story is great. The, Artwork was good. I liked it. It was it was new artwork. It was like um, kind of like I don't know. Which artist reminds me of um, uh, Carlos Reyes? I'm trying to think of someone, but I I don't remember. But it's it's also great. Sorry, um, but it's you know. I, and then like um, Kill Switch issue one pops out like he's you can see him running and it just pops out and this one the alternate cover is great the back covers are great you know it's very colorful it pops out like the front cover you know it just the color just blends in with everything but even for Clown Man mostly for Clown Man this is sinister. This is like, to me, this looks like Joker, <laughs> but in a different alternate universe, who became the superhero. That would be cool. It'd be like, Batman became the villain, Joker became the superhero. Could be a good idea, but you know. Oh, also, yeah, train cards. They're great. Training cards are great, very bloody, very interesting. I hope that the uh, second issues for Cloud Man in Kill Switch also has training cards. Like, um, if you've seen the villains at the end, like um, Murmass for Cloud Man issue one, I hope that there's a training card for the physical uh, physical copy of Cloud Man issue two, as well as for Ghost Eye in uh, Kill Switch issue two. That would be very cool because, I mean, later on in the future, there, there might be like a hundred cards or something. Um, I missed out the uh, poster. You know, the, I don't know who the artist is, but the artist is very incredible with what they did. Even with the uh, Blood Moon, a um, lot of coloring, a lot of dark age edges. I just... To me, um, comic books with color, they're just the best. I mean, it shows what, it shows like the character popping out. It's like, you don't need to read 3D glasses to see something in 3D because it just pops out of the page. Like, you can actually see it as a film. I tried to do that with, um, black and white comic books, but I never got that feeling of things popping out of the cover. That's why I was never really into um, mangas, or is it manga, 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 maybe, I don't know. Just never into it, because it was black and white. I just didn't feel it popping out, but this is so colorful. Both these comic books are so colorful that you just pop out. So, yeah, and, um, you know, Clown Man issue one, it was it was a lot of fun. 
I never read an origin story that was actually important. It was actually enjoyable to read. I mean, I never really read much comic books that was enjoyable to read. There could be like the best Batman comic books and I would like them. Maybe for a little bit. And they're very popular and be like, yeah, that's a good story. But the origin story of Batman, where he first appeared, like, actually first appeared, I never really liked it. I mean, it was kind of bland. It was like, oh, I see a bat. I'm going to be I'm gonna be Batman. And even my favorite superhero, Spider-Man, that was an import important origin story. First appearance was good, but this right here, this origin story, first appearance, there's no need to change it. Okay, there's no need to change it. It's perfect as it is. Just like the logo. I mean, hey, if maybe in the future, you know, Clownman logo could change over time like the Batman logo did. Or it could stay like the Amazing Spider-Man logo did. Well, it did change once. But for the most time, it stayed as the Amazing Spider-Man. Just like Kill Switch, it could change over time or it could stay. What I most like is the symbol. You, there's always a symbol in the background, like the smiley faces. It's everywhere. It just it symbolizes who Clowman is, and that's important. That's that's what's important. And then for Kill Switch, you see in the background the K. That symbolizes who Kill Switch is. And I think, you know, for. I think all of the issues should have that symbol in the background to let people remember, okay, this is your symbol. It, This is who they are for both of them. But it's incredible. Um, so like I said, Clown Man reminds me of Joker, but you flip-flop the roles. Joker becomes a superhero, superhero like he's the orphan. It's like, what if... Batman was Joker, but his name is Clown Man, and Joker was Batman. They they just like flip off the rose. Kill Switch reminds me of Deathstroke and um no well, not Deathstroke and Deadpool, but he's a little bit more serious. He has those inappropriate jokes, okay? He has those dark puns, okay? So yeah. But what's even better is he's not in a skin tight suit or anything he's actually in full armor and that's what's incredible about him um but what's also incredible and surprising is how it holds you to your seat at the end of the comic book so we're gonna flip to the end of the comic book and uh sorry Carl carlos but also, if you're watching this now, I'm going to warn you, spoiler alert. I already opened this book, so spoiler alert for you. you uh, sorry, I should have warned you before, but oh well. Murray Mask. This is Murray Mask. It says to be continued right here. This is Murray Mask. He's supposedly going to be in issue two. Now, my question is, what would issue two of Clown Man be like? Will there be flashbacks um, explaining about um, Clown Man's childhood past? Because we need to know that about his past, what happened in the past during childhood, or before he became Clown Man. Like, clicks and flashbacks, like, we need to see that when he gets his memory back, one by one. It's like Spawn, you know, they show the flashbacks in his life, one by one, and he became all in one, remembered everything. Now, that can be like Clown Man, okay? He can remember nothing at all, or a little bit, and then everything's back. And he remembers everything, and he just lives with it, and accepts it. Also, um, Murray Mask. I, we, we've seen a couple panels. I've seen a couple panels, like that big, huge splash page 
in uh, issue two where the uh, two go up against each other. Like, okay, um, so evidentially, if you've seen the bios, you know that Jinxie and Guns are supposed to be in issue three. Like, how is issue two going to be connected to issue three? Like, or how is issue one going to be connected to issue two? How's that going to be a link to that? Just like, how, where, where's issue two going to lead to Jinxie and Guns in issue three? Or how is this gonna, whole story going to play out? That's my question. What I think is that the connection with this is that there's going to, there what I think is there should be a flashback of, um, this scene right here, you know, the first few issues, and then it's issue two starts right here, and it somehow links to um, what is right here. You know, these two kind of links to this in some way. Like, this could be part of the story right here and then it goes back to and then it kind of goes kind of connects to um these two that's my idea of what could happen um but things can change things can change on um, issue two you know um but yeah that's just my thought that could happen that it just could um you know, in my opinion, you know, the Clown Man black cover right here won't look the same as it does right here. It's going to be different. would be cool if it is different. You know, I think that would be a good idea to change this up. But to keep the logo right here and, you know, it would be like issue one here or, I mean, issue two, Merlin, you know, keep... Keep it like this concept right here, just different art for each cover, and then like maybe different art right here. It'll be cool. Um, but uh, let's see. But like I said, um, I think it would be cool if issue two kind of goes back to this really here um right here just goes back to the scene make a certain connection here right and uh you know kind of explains more of this right here makes a connection here and then like i like i said before um somehow finds he finds a way to connect this and this to the big scenery and that will be issue two okay so I talked about mostly about Clown Man issue one so we're gonna push that off to the side and go to kill switch now kill switch now we know that kill switch issue one is called kill code and we also discovered that Kill Switch issue two is going to be called Project Ch Kill Switch. Now, when I hear that, my opinion is it's going to go back a little back in the past and explain about um, Mark Roberts as Kill Switch, how he became Kill Switch, um, how he became this huge project thing in the beginning. Like, how it all started for him. And when, uh, if you read the bio, you know, um, it kind of explains about his, um, past, how he became Kill Switch all at once. Now, as you see this photo, this could be a bit of a hint, hint, spoiler of how he was created in some certain way. Now, issue one doesn't really talk about his origin at all. It just, he gets off a ship and it's like, all right, I'm going on a killing spree 
um, killing streak. Kill, um, killing streak or kill streak. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. But yeah. Issue 2, I think it will probably focus more on his past origin story a little bit. An important point, point too. Um, but also, as it focuses on his origin story, you know, to be continued, you know, um, we'll also see Ghost Eye. Now, I think this character will be a bit challenging, you know. Hopefully, he does not get killed. But if he does get killed, let's hope he's not as easy, easily killed as Crimson Red. Now, <laughs> I, I believe that Kill Switch needs a challenge, like a big challenge and everything. And I think issue two is going to be that big click right there, where it tells a bit about his past, where we get to know him. And, um, you know, it's important we need to know about the past, about the past, not only about the hero, but I also hope that the past will be explained about the villains, you know, just like, um, I hope the past, well, we didn't, we, um, for issue one, Lamorty of Clown Man, for example, we didn't really know anything about him, we knew that he was a mob boss, or what information was given to us. But what about his past? Okay? What about his past? Ghost Skull, what about his past? Um, Murder Mask, we need to know about his past. Now, issue two, maybe not. Um, it'd be cool if we know a little bit about it, but there needs to be further issues laid down the line to explain about their past so we can get to know them. A lot of comic books kind of lack that, where it they do origin or they don't do origin about a character, and some characters die off because of that, or the origin is not good enough, it's not really reasonable, it kind of destroys who, uh, ruins what the character is, but, um, I have faith in Carl's that he won't destroy his characters, I mean, he did a good job in climbing issue one, but uh, I believe that Carl, uh, Chris Mason's past needs to be explained a little bit more. Um, it would be definitely cool. And Lamorty, I would love to see what his past was like, how he became Lamorty, his childhood and everything. I mean, it's it's a good concept of that. Just like Mark Roberts, what was his past before he became this this kill switch? Like, who was he before he put on the suit? Um, or was there other kill switches there in the past? You know, you gotta think about that. Like, the life of someone else who became kill switch before him. Now I don't know if there's other kill switches before that. I really don't know. I just know that Mark Roberts is Kill Switch. That's it. Hold on. I'm just checking how how charged my phone is before it goes dead. But um So yeah, that's that's my idea.
Mark Roberts kill switch. I mean, it's it's like your favorite to me. It's like my favorite TV show, where we just wa I just watched the first episode. Um, yeah, I just watched the first episode and uh, <laughs> sorry. I don't need that. Sorry, I'm just messing with stuff that I don't need. Yeah. Just doing life. Um, I lost my concentration. Okay, what was I saying? Okay, so yeah. Origin stories are very important. And I'm very curious what issue 2 brings for these people. Um, Chris Mason comment in Kill Switch issue two, um, but it's like my favorite. Like I, okay, like I said, it's like my favorite TV show. Um, I'm gonna flip back to me. So it's like my favorite TV show, and my hair is messy. Okay, it's like my favorite TV show that I watched a lot of times, and um, you know it's just the first episode, so. I'm curious, I have a lot of questions, what's going to happen to issue 2, but I have to hold on to my seat, you know, I gotta be patient for this episode to come, do I want to be patient, no, I mean, who wants to be patient about this show that they just watch, and it's just like, okay, first episode is good, what happens next, who knows, well, oh. What I'm also excited about is um, the new comic book, Dragon Masters. That looks very promising, and uh, so does. Um, where are these cover? I'm trying to find the covers in these comic books, in both these comic books, to show you. I can't find them because they're like hidden. It's like trying to find Wallo. You're trying to find these covers for them. So it may, may take a little while. Alright, so we saw the kill switch one. Oh, okay, so yeah. You saw the kill switch one. Very good. Uh, that was the alternate cover. Kind of jumps a bit after this. Ooh, there we go. Dragon Masters. I don't know if this is an alternate cover. Or if this is the main cover from Dragon Masters, but it's very cool. Um, jumps out of the page. Um, Bloodstone, very excited for that. Um, very excited for the beginning of this. Um, wonder who the films are. Um, and what issue 2 leads to that. Just like Dragon Masters, very curious. Um, look at fan art. Of Clown Man, that's they're all cool, they're very um creative. <sighs> Excuse me, um, you know, it's uh very cool too that he um, you know, he showed his uh social media links where you can follow them, like um, you where you can follow them on Facebook. Um, YouTube or Instagram, you know, it's it's good to have multiple social media sites. Um, even YouTube, YouTube is very popular. Instagram is popular nowadays. Twitter is popular. Facebook's popular. You just gotta use multiple uh, social media sites to get all these fans. And you know what? It actually works out. Um, but I gotta say, my favorite cover right here. Come in issue one. It's already my favorite cover, but my favorite color, my favorite cover. 
after Clowman issue one. It's freaking Clowman issue two. This is like all dark coloring, but it blends like you. Like it shows like oh. You thought issue one's gonna be sinister. Wait until you get issue two. Like this is this is like telling you like this is gonna be a lot darker than issue one. And it's very creative stuff. You have the smiley face, but it's all bloody. You have him holding the card. Again, the gun. You know, he's in the middle. Like, he's in the middle in issue one and two. This, um, this is what we call a purple cow. Or, in my school, we call this the purple cow. It's like, what makes this different? What makes it important? Important. Uh, what what pops out? This is the purple cow. Clowman's purple cow. This is the main brand. The purple brand cow is the main brand. It's what's different beyond anything else. Or this is the center point. Kind of like a bullseye. That's your center point. That's what you're going to see in the middle. And the center point is what you see first. What what I see first before anything else is the hero. I see his face. He's in the center. And then, what I see next is probably a smiley face or maybe murder mask in the background. And then, this would be the last one up the top. Issue 2. I cannot, honestly, I can't wait to get this comic book. Because I'm one of those people that would just be like this. When it's like in number order to me. Number one is at the top. For some people, it's like the, um, it may be like issue two is at the top, and then issue one is at the bottom, and that's how they do their number order backwards. Me, I do it forwards, where issue one is at the top, issue two, bottom. But I can't wait to stack it up. I mean, if it gets to 100 issues, that would be great. Um, but yeah, really love issue two of Clown Man. The cover is great. I don't think it should be changed. But uh, I would love to see some alternate covers for that. Like, um, with the, like, uh, Wicked Con uh, Comets contest has been doing for, um, Kill Switch issue 2, which very, very creative covers. I like them all. I've seen them all. Um, and, uh, Personally, I hope to see more for the contest stain, and I hope to see more contest stains. Even, like I said, for um, Clowman Issue 2, it, if he gets an alternate cover. Because I definitely like the original cover for Kill Switch Issue 1. But I also like uh, Kill Switch Issue 1's alternate cover. I also like, like the train card, you know, front and back. Um. And, uh, yeah. I uh, for Carl's sake, I won't mention, say, or mention his name about the artist who did this. Just, yeah. This one, uh huh, this one's very awesome. I, I will. I really want to get the train cards of his films, like Lamorty, uh, Murder Mask, Ghost Cole, just all of them. I want to collect all the train cards that comes out from Wicked Comics. Before I, in the past, I'll be honest, I never liked, um, I never liked train cards at all. Train cards were kind of, mm, to me, but, um, yeah. What do you think will happen in issue two? Um, never mind. Sorry. Um, mind that. All right. So my question is to stop talking about the train cards. Um, going back to the issues. What do you think will happen in issue two of Clown Man and Kill Switch? Um, that that that's my main question. Personally, fans of Wicked Comments, what do you think will happen in issue two of Wicked of Climate and issue two and Kill Switch issue two? 
comment down below and uh, I would like to see it or uh, Carlos Rice um, if you like to explain to us fans a little bit or as much as you like about what will happen if I'm in issue one or I mean not issue one or comment issue two and uh, kill switch issue two please go ahead uh, fill us fill us up with some information that is if you like if you don't want to fine I mean spoiling things it's not such good things but if you want to fill us up with some information please go ahead Oh, it's been 31 minutes in this live video. Um, I do. Um, believe I probably have my own fan art of um. The uh, Wicked Comics Clowman villains, probably two of them, or three. I can find them. I don't know. Yeah, I'll find them real quick. I'll be right back, guys. It may take a little while, but I'll be back. So, what I did is just, I went through the pile that I have, I may not have all of the art that I had, I have for quickie comments, but, um, I do have my own art, and, uh, of what I create as well, it's not really wiki comments related, related, but, um, uh, Anyways, I hope that you guys like it anyways. Um, I'm just going to try to keep to the conversation of the thing that's going on. Um, personally, just like um, Carlos Farias in the wiki comments, I'm trying to create a comic book company of my own. It's not really working out. I only have... 23 members, but, um, the, uh, name of the company is called Imagination Comics. Um, I created the name of the company when I was in, uh, ooh, I don't know, like, somewhere around in the middle of high school, sophomore year, but, uh, yeah. So, I want to start with my old art. If that's okay with you guys. And uh, I'm gonna put this right here. Let me get some stuff out of the way. Um, okay. Hope this is a good position to do it. I hope my phone, look, my phone doesn't fall in the middle of the crack. That'll be bad. Alright, so. What we have here is an old hero that I made back in the past. Um, originally, it was made by the uh, character was made by um, 
Lavar of Calvin Marsh, his name of uh, Calvin Marshmallow, and um, so he he let me create the superhero thing for fun, and uh, I'm not not gonna try to get the fame of it, but uh, I always liked the idea of creating the superhero thing, and um, just decided to create him and name him um, Marshmallow Man. So yeah, this is Marshmallow Man. And what you could do is heat up his body. Um, also, with this heat, he could shoot at his enemies to tackle them or take them down. You know, I thought that could be a superhero since in the past, I never thought he should have superpowers or anything, but now he does. So I thought that was cool. Um, Another thing is this. Um, the next one is this comic book panel of uh, Marshmallow Man attacking, fighting against a super villain. And uh, the super villain's name is Dark Twiggy. So, yeah. Thought that was cool. Um, I don't know, maybe. I hope this live video is not a little any really long. I apologize, Carlos, if I'm going too long or if I'm making the video against against your rules. Um, I hope I'm allowed to to show my art. I uh, I hope you don't mind. No. Um, if the video is not allowed, just uh, go ahead and delete it afterwards. I won't mind then. But, uh, so, um, yeah. And then, uh, my next art is the Dark Twinkie. Dark Twinkie himself. I mean, I don't know why I like sketching Dark Twinkie, but there was something special about the guy that made me say, huh, I really like this film. And here we go again with Dark Twinkie. I was probably obsessed with Dark Twinkie when it came to sketching him. I mean, he was the most sketch. Oh, here's an air feeling that I liked. Killer Fudge. This was another Marshmallow Man filling. And as you can see, my initials are right here, JW. That was my autograph that I did out of all of them. I would just keep on doing uh, this. You know, Killer Fudge again. Here's an air filling. Um, King Donut. Oh, hey, Carlos. You, you should probably be watching this right now, Carlos, because. This is an old superhero that I thought should cross over with Clown Man before I create, um, before I stopped fully doing him. But um, I'm gonna show you him and see what you guys think. If you guys think I should bring him back. And also his feelings, but hey, yeah. This was a superhero that I thought should be, should, crossover with Clown Man. Um, Carlos will mostly memorize him because I talked to him, talked about him a lot during high school. But this is Scarecrow Man. Matthew Wells Scarecrow Man. And what you can do is, you know, his hands go in flames and you can create any weapon to his imagination by playing. And, um, I thought he was a cool concept idea. I don't know. Do you guys think, um, Scarecrow Man should be back in Imagination Comics? Do you think he would make a good crossover? I mean, he's a mo it's like a monster crossover with monster creature crossing over with creature. 
people are afraid of clowns. People are afraid of scarecrow monster scarecrows because hey, they can't die. You shoot them. <laughs> you shoot them, they still walk. You burn them. Well, that's probably bad for you because it's gonna take a while. They don't hate burst up quick, but scarecrows life. I don't think they burn up quickly as you think. And then here's um. Anyways, here's a sketch of Dark Winky again. A uh, little quick sketch idea thingy. Um, not great art, but uh, so here's what um, this more crusader is. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, Super Jacks. Marshmallow Man again. I'm actually gonna, gonna do a favor and skip Skipperoo to to what's important. Alright. So, I finally found it. The Wicked Comics fan art. This is what I had an idea of Mirror Mask right here. That was my sketch of Mirror Mask. This this right here was my very first sketch that was put in the website of Wicked Comics. And this was what was supposed to be Blood Hunt. This was also put right here in this very group. And I believe the page of Wicked Comics. And I appreciate that. Carlos Farias actually put that there for me because it, I felt it for This one's not really great, but um, I just put um, this is supposedly Mad Monkey and he's screeching like he's his loud voice is echoing, kind of like King Kong or something, and every people's brains skulls just explode their heads just explode and you see brains everywhere nasty, I know but I thought it was a cool idea and then uh, I wanted to do a phantom man sketch so I did this this is my phantom man sketch like I said not so great but uh, hey it's better than most of my sketches <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna skip a lot of the stuff so I can do that. This was another sketch that I had of um, Marshmallow Man. Yeah, um, it's more Crusade, that is. Their Marshmallow Man thing. Um, this is like Marshmallow Man cutout thing, and it says, I'm Marshmallow Man, or something like that. I was. A bit dork, still am. Um. Ooh. So, guess what I found? The um, Clown Man and Scarecrow Man concept idea that I had of a crossover. I decided to make a small story of it. It wasn't that good. But it says, um, I feel like a stranger in the city, a trespasser, unwanted, and unneeded. I have marked someone's territory, and they know this now, they're coming after me. I can sense it. And it says, the ragged figure stands on the roof of a building, straw hat covering his face, uh, rain pouring down hard. Rain is pouring down hard. Um, and it said, he says again, will you become a friend and join, and join me? Or another enemy that I must face off and destroy? That I don't know, not yet. And it says, face show and eyes are shut. You know, the action. And, it, and then he finally talks, you know, out of his mouth. Now, the other things were caption boxes, and the Scarecrow Man talks and says, only time can tell. 
and it says his eyes shut his eyes flash open glowing you know his eyes were dark green so it's glowing dark green you know and it shows that and then um in the back it says he's slow he's slow slowly flowing down the dark alley known as Murray Lane uh, Bloodbird scans area that was one of my um, scare man feelings and then it says the wings fold the blades hit them cling 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 you know that was supposed to be Burn Mask um, blades it says the blades fall to the ground no effect and no pain to Bloodbird's you know Bloodbird was like uh, the vulture but younger younger in high tech um, suit of armory appearing out of darkness is a fearful uh, mirror mask and it says mirror mask master the blades do not affect I don't understand and it says demon of course not hollow skull now shut up and take care of him you know the I, that was my idea. And it says, Murder Mask strikes his machete connecting to the arm of Blood, Blood Bird um, with a spark of. with a spark. I don't know. Clink! Again. It says, Darts dart shoot out from the wrist of Blood Bird. So, yeah, Blood Bird starts. <coughs> Excuse me. That was nasty. Alright, so Dart starts shooting out of Bloodbird. You no, know, the battle starts. And it starts going to his flesh. Um, Mirror Mask flesh, that is. So yeah, that was a little bit of the idea. I kind of really want to restart this story. And I want to give, you know, Scarecrow Man a chance. And, uh, just... Yeah, just give Scare Command a chance. What do you think? Should I give Scare Command there a chance? Put all his feelings back. I think it's probably. I don't know. Oh, look at this. There's more to it. And it says Murray Mass takes the darts and rips them out. Because he's Murray Mass. And it says, Your weapons do not harm me, human. And it says, knock, knock, knock. And it says, Lamori, open the door and shh. Open the door and shoot them away. I'm busy counting my money. So this is like, little jump on, jump on of what's going to happen. It says, the last mortals, thug, one of the thugs of Lamori opens the door and then it's like, Well, cybernet, you know, crows are called murder. A group of crows are called murder. It says cybernet crows flew in and it goes, gar, 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 something like that. It says nothing but dead corpse lies there, clawed up badly. So the cybernet crows just kill that, that thug right there. <laughs> it says walking in is an elderly man in a trench coat. So. My character, Scavenger, or who I call Dr. Crow now, because I figured out Scavenger is an awful man feeling I didn't want to take, I didn't want to get sued by DC Comics, so I just call him Dr. Crow. And not like um, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Crow. I call him Dr. Crow. I don't know if that's copyright, but if it is, I call him Professor Crow. Right, so yeah. I'm gonna say Dr. Crow. It says, hello, my friend. I heard you could help me kill a little scarecrow. Yeah, that was, that was the end of the crossover thing. Nothing really much to it. Um, 
yeah. But um, here's my prize possession. This. Now, nowadays I'm doing a superhero called Mass Man. This is the film right here named Slasher. You can form his hands into any weapon. I think you'd be a good combat combat against against the villain Mermask. Well, um, I think I went a little bit too far with the video. And um, I think 50 minutes is good enough. So I'm gonna stop here. Um, anyways I hope you guys liked the 50 minutes live video this is probably the longest I've ever been on a live video but once again my name is Jeremiah Williams and uh, I hope to do another live video of um, maybe bringing back Scarecrow Scarecrow Man maybe a sketch of a crossover or something Maybe my idea on Scarecrow Man. But, um, yeah. I hope you like this video. And I'm sorry that I went too far and added some stuff in there. But, anyways, have a good day. Have a good day, guys. Actually, have a wonderful day. And, uh, see you later.